Hey everyone, I'm Niveda Murli here, founder of Nugen Max and Niveda E Academy. I've trained over 50,000 plus people to kickstart their e-commerce business. And I have a special guest today, Sami. So welcome, Sami, to our show. Thank you, Niveda. Thank you so much for inviting me today. I just want to give a brief intro about Sami. Like he runs an agency called Regro Media, and it is one of the top Amazon PPC agencies in India. He handles clients globally also. He works with more than 60 plus brands, and he has a full-time team members of 35 plus. And everyone would have seen his seen his ads on FB, on YouTube, etc. And I really love the way that he's sharing the case studies in his YouTube channel, like how he was able to scale some of the brands internationally. So over to you, Sammy. You can give a brief intro to our audience, and then we can kickstart this Q and A questions. Yeah. First of all, thank you so much. And uh, my name is Sammy Akhtar. Uh, I started my journey in Amazon as an Amazon seller from the year 2017. I was in my college days on the second year. I had some trauma in my life. That is why I started my own business because I had to. Otherwise, there was no other option. Now I'm the founder of Regrow Media. It is a full service marketing agency where we help sellers and brands to understand data and try to help to scale their revenue. So that is what we are doing right now. Great, great, great. So in today's video, I just wanted to ask some of the PPC question that every seller is asking me or having doubts. So one thing that I noticed is that in the recent days, there are a lot of updates on Amazon ads. So what update do you really like and what have you tested and what is your takeaway from that? Yeah, so I like to tell about three updates that have recently load, rolled out in even in Indian marketplace as well. First of all, talking about uh, display ads. So display ads roll their videos, display video ads. Now, a few days back, there were no contextual targeting where we can target products as well or competitors, AA signs. Now we can target them as well. So we can show our videos to all those shoppers who have either visited our product listing or visited our, our competitor's product listing. Or we can also target our videos to show to other competitors' listings as well. This is one feature which is going to be a game changer. We are getting really good data because these are retargetings. Now, the next thing is uh, one where I recently posted a, a LinkedIn post about this. And the post tells the title like this, that uh, I'm the most honest person in the Amazon community. I posted with the title. And the title follows by this. The same way Amazon is trying to say with us as well. So what Amazon is releasing is they release a new report called a gross and invalid traffic report. So we use all these tools, Helium 10, Jungle Scout, and whatever tools we have. And whenever we do a reverse A assign to check what are the keywords our competitor is ranking for, they go in the back end and search on our behalf. And when they do that search, that counts as a bot search. Now you may call that, yes, yes, if they are searching it, they might be also clicking our ads. So we are paying for the ads and they might be charging us for that bot search as well. Now, what mm. this report tells is this report tells about total uh, impressions. Then it tells about the invalid impressions. Then it tells about the gross impressions. So Amazon is telling you that, that listen, seller, I'm already counting for that invalid impressions and I'm discounting you for that. And I'm showing you the real data. So mm. Amazon tells that, yes, I know what bot searches are and I'm already counting it and not telling you that data, I am sharing you the right data. So that is what this report gives you. It gives you invalid clicks, invalid impressions per campaign. So for this, you can also check out which campaign have got maximum invalid clicks. Maybe you can work on some keywords on that. This is the second option. The third option is goes on a little bit advanced side with the launch of AMC, Amazon Marketing Cloud. Previously for all the first party vendors, they used to have that uh, selling partner API, which later on transformed mm -hmm. to MWS API. And uh, now uh, they, they have a lot of tracking opportunities previously given to the first party vendors, even uh, the marketing stream, which gives hourly data. But right now, Amazon is bringing on AMC, which is uh, a multi-channel connections. That means it is connecting all the dots. Let's assume we have a DSP ad, demand side platform ad that is being ran. And some customer are clicking on that and coming to our listing and they're not purchasing. Later on, we are targeting them with, let's assume, sponsored product ads. And they're clicking on that and buying our product. 
or let's assume the journey goes like this if they're clicking on our sponsored products and later on we are targeting them with our brand ads maybe headline search ads or maybe brand video ads and they're purchasing from that ad but there is no connection in between them now amazon is showing you the real connection between all those and connecting the dots and showing you the real customer journey so in amc they're connecting everything right uh, search ads dsp then they're connecting seismic which is ad platform amazon owned long bag uh, they're mm -hmm. providing custom data we can upload custom data and also non ads data as well whatever say sales we are getting that are not through sales not through ads that also are counting obviously this data we can't get direct access to we have to rely on some tools who are handling these apis so these are the three options i think that are going to be a game changer and almost all of these are available to indian sellers as well or coming to be available okay okay that's great to hear so just from a layman point of view uh, we got a lot of questions like there are sponsor display ads has rolled out video ads it has been nearly a month i guess and now people are like okay i have already wasted money on sponsored brand video ads so i try to convince them okay sponsored brand video or something is different now the sponsor display video or something different because we are going to target directly to the product page and also the results are really amazing when compared to sponsored brand video ads so just i want a comparison from you like how the sponsor display video ads results are there when compared to sponsored brand video ads just some ratio or some analysis from your side yeah i would 100% agree on you that uh, sponsored brand video are expensive because if you are targeting on the front end so we generally use them for if we have a proven keyword or if those keywords are organically ranked for us and giving us sales now sponsored display ads now display ads is a mini version of dsp hmm. it is a baby of dsp that is just started to going to go go to school and learning and gathering knowledge so in the, the display ads this video we can retarget now retargeting is a main feature that we supposed to use rather than using category targeting or direct product targeting because that can be expensive a little bit because that spreads a little bit broad now retargeting we can target anyone that have viewed our product listing in last 7 days 30 days 90 days so that brings a lot more value to especially for those who are selling supplements because they need a lot of repeat purchases correct so valid that, point they can, yeah they can target all those who have purchased previously and they might have forgotten or their bottle might be on on finishing stage they might need to reorder and your ad comes on their place now that is going to prove a lot more inexpensive and that is going to bring a less a cost for you great 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 so uh, seems to be a very valid point and um, another question i have is that many people ask me like can i still launch a product by believing amazon ppc in even in 2023 is it going to work so what would be your answer for that so um, yeah i mean uh, you can obviously launch through ppc because ultimately when we say about a product now i'll tell you a story uh, you are uh, living near my state as well so uh, almost one year back uh, there was a huge storm i think you know it about amfa yes so in in yes, that storm yes. i live in a place uh, this this building is a 14 story building i live in the 12th floor so okay. my hall it attached it is attached to a balcony which has uh, like three sliding doors glass transparent sliding doors and when i uh, like slide those doors those three doors stacks on one another and we have this huge view that we can see now i gathered my uh, strength and stand on that window to see how the storm is coming how the speed of the wind is and i see bottom uh, there are three trees each will be 50 feet tall and while i'm standing there i can see out of that three tree one tree came down slanting like this way and fell on the ground i can see the roots so now you may ask why is that out of that three only one fell down and the other two are standing strong some branches might have broken so that might be happening because the two trees that are standing have their roots deep down the ground or scattered through a long area so similarly with every product that we launch every product in order to get its position in the first place and hold strongly there will be thousands of keywords that are responsible so when you try to launch a product through ppc you are only targeting few keywords ppc can bring you a good results but you have to really really rely on whether you are targeting short tail or long tail because what i have seen in indian marketplace is maximum sellers try to launch with short tail keywords which have high search volume and they generally cost a lot so instead of that 
you can also target exact if you're running but make the bids really low on exact but phrase which will bring you more long tail keywords that could be an option for launching and you can obviously get keywords that you want to target through a lot of softwares are there right reverse AI science softwares and you can also find the relevancy that which keywords are relevant so that is how i think you should launch it but we have also tried launching through google ads tiktok ads not in india but in global marketplaces where we use a software called pixel me in that okay. what we did was we ran google ads we created separate campaigns for separate keywords so that we can track which keyword is bringing sales now okay. amazon have their program in usa that is called referral bonus program where or, or brand referral bonus where they pay seller if the seller bring external traffic and then that converts to a sale they pay from 5% to 20% or on an average, it will be around 10%. So they pay that back around in, in, in around 20 to 30 days, they pay to the seller account. So in that, what was happening is whenever we are getting one sale through Google Ads, through that keyword, our ranking juice for that keyword was increasing. Mm -hmm. And now that is sending Amazon signal from different side, first from PPC, then from Google Ads. We also were running TikTok ads because TikTok ads mm -hmm. really work in the USA. So Amazon is seeing signals from all three options. And now they're pushing organic sales in the honeymoon period a lot more than what we used to get previously. And that is a little bit aggressive side of launching. We have to put some budget at least $20 a day on launching on Google Ads. Okay, okay. So I have one question. So now every people is okay to run ads, but they don't focus on the product optimization. Like they just launched with few images, few reviews. So what do you think will be the ideal product listing page optimization? Like how many reviews should they have? How many images? So any tips on that? Yeah, so it completely depends on uh, your competition. Like we have seen products to be launched in marketplaces where they have succeeded without any reviews because they had no competition and their product was really differentiated. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're selling a Me Too product, that really becomes hard for the seller plus as well as for the marketplace because the marketplace don't want you to send the traffic because they are already yeah. seeing the same kind of conversion now what is happening is run the ads for one week look at the ctr and the conversion rate now ctr the click-through rate tells you the ideal definition whether the, your ads are performing good or not now when it comes to an ad it comes to four to five points first your title the first 80 to 89 characters that are shown if you're in mobile or first yeah. 127 to 137 characters if you're in desktop that then it plays to the ratings and the review numbers, then the main image, and then it comes to the pricing. So this four to five components you have to work on. If you're CTR, if I give you an example of a good CTR, anything more than 0.3%, we consider it good. So okay. if you see anything is coming low, then you have to work on those parts. Now, how long do you have to work on that? How much reviews you want? That completely depends on your data. So you have to keep on improving and checking whether your ACOS, whether your CTR is improving or not. Now, when the traffic is inside your listing, that completely depends now on your listing that it should convert the traffic to sale. It is the listing's responsibility now. Now we have to look at either the ads conversion rate that you can get through advertised product report or the other reports available, or you can also look at unit session percentage. Though unit session percentage and conversion rate are two different things, but still sellers consider them same. Mm -hmm. You can look at that. So. If let's assume a conversion rate or immunization percentage of 8% or lower you are getting, that means the conversion rate is not good. So in that particular scenario, you need to optimize the rest images. Whether you are showing your customer avatar in the images or not, who is going to buy it? Whether you're showing, or not, you, uh, showing that or not. In brand analytics, they have a report called demographics where it shows uh, what is the age group of your customer, whether they are male or female. So by that, you can understand the exact age group and have a model photo shoot done exactly with that particular person. Now the customer can relate that, yes, this is how it is going to look at when we buy this product. Then the product videos. Now, a lot of sellers try to use slides or videos, which trust me, it is not working. I mean, we, we are having that conversation as well. So product videos, bullet points. I don't think that still works that much okay? because Amazon is trying to push down bullet points in the mobile list, the mobile right. uh, listings, right? So that is one point. Then brand story, you get those uh, options where you can click on other products. Then come a little bit bottom, there is A plus content, which is really important. Mm. A lot of sellers are doing a lot of copywriting in the A plus content, which I think is good during the first one or two months for SEO purpose. But after that, when your conversion is improved, make sure you change that images to big images, 970 to 600 pixel mm. images yeah. and comparison chart. Those are a few important things. Obviously the first, 
five to six reviews that are in, in that page as well. Yeah. Okay, great, great. And a lot of valid points. So since we discussed about this, I just want to add an additional question. So PPC sales versus organic sales, the ratios keep on decreasing. So what's your take on this and how to boost this organic sales? Yeah, so um, that is a really interesting question and I love to answer that. So firstly, I would answer in perspective of a supplement brand owner. Okay. So supplement brand owners are already familiar with this scenario because if they're selling a product for 500, it is costing the 600, 700 rupees to sell a product mm. if they're new because no one wants to trust a supplement. Correct. So how they are making their money? They are making their money through repeat purchases, through lifetime value of that customer. They know how to calculate the lifetime value of that particular customer that they are acquiring, let's assume, by spending 500 rupees. They know what the frequency of buying of that customer is. I put one video on my YouTube channel long back, almost one year back, where I showed how to calculate LTV, customer acquisition cost, and frequency of buyer by looking into FB orders report. I think that is something that is going to influence a lot, plus the retargetings, all cross-selling and upselling opportunities that you have, you need to nail down in that. Try to mm -hmm. sell as much as you can of your products so that your average order value increases. That would be one point. Now, obviously, PPC sales are going to increase because Amazon has so many placements for ads, but very less placements for organic listing. Mm. So ultimately, that is going to happen a lot more than what we are seeing right now. So how to tackle that? Obviously, over time optimization of your listing that means complete SEO. Every th three months, you need to check how many keywords you are getting ranked for and indexed for. So I would say you need to target at least 3,000 keywords to be ranked in the next three months of launching your product. So SEO is going to play a major role in this. And also for other languages, let's assume we are selling in Kolkata or our maximum sales happens in West Bengal. Mm. In West Bengal, maximum are Bengali speaking people. And if we are not using those keywords, Bengali keywords in our listing, you don't have to use in the front end so that the customer can see, use it in the alt text of A plus content. Mm. So those are the options you need to use in order to tackle all the situations that are going to happen and use all the ads types that you can use. Okay. So that's a great answer. So uh, based on your speech, I could clearly see that you value reports a lot. It's all about reports. So what do you think that most of the sellers are not checking this report? What do you think is one report that every seller should check? Yeah. So I think uh, you and me, we both get this question that our sales are not increasing. It is consistent for over a period and we want some solutions on it. So in order to get the solution, we need to di uh, deep dive into one report called search term impression share report. That is a report in which Amazon tells you that, listen, these are the keywords that you are targeting. And in that keyword, you are ranked at, let's assume, third position. Now, how that ranking happens is that ranking happens based on your impression share that you are taking. Let's assume there are three competitors that are running ads for that particular keyword. That means you are taking one third, not one third, you are taking one out of the three uh, impressions available. So let's assume 100% impressions are comprised of all the three competitors. And you are taking 10% of the impression share mm. out of the total impressions available. That means the rest 90% is divided into the rest top two uh, competitors. So if you see in that report, it also gives you the CTR, the conversion rate, the ad spent. So if you see your CTR is good, your conversion rate is good, your ACOS is good, and your impression share is low, your impression rank is low, but that is not a branded keyword, then you need to increase your bid to get more impression, impression mm -hmm. share or market share. So you need to figure out similarly 20, 30 search keywords where your impressions are low, your rank is low, but your conversion is good, your ACoS is good. That will simply give you a huge boost in your sales. That is one report that is really important every seller should look at. So that's a, a really detailed and a great answer. So we were discussing about something about mobile optimized listing. For example, as you said, in the mobile, we don't have the bullet points, it's pushed down. So what do you think about the mobile optimized listing and any tips on that? Yeah. So mobile optimized listing. First of all, uh, if you have ever searched of table lamp on Amazon, just go and search table lamp. You will see there will be some listing which, which are using square images and you will see one listing of Philips. They're using a tall image. Hmm. Their dimension will be one is to 1.5 or one is to two. Now you will notice that 
somehow the image of Philips is looking much more bigger than the rest. That is because they are using tall image and tall image takes more space in Amazon. So if you're, if you're selling, let's say a bottle, it is a tall product. Mm. If you use a square image, it takes a lot of white space. So first of all, use tall image. If you have a tall product, if you're selling a bottle, supplements, all those kinds of things that gets more attention. The more attention you can get, the more purchase you are going to get. That is first thing. Second thing is in mobile, you will notice that the whole title doesn't come up when you search. It will be almost 89 to 90 characters or, or around 79. You can check on character count, depends category to category. Only few characters are being shown there. So you have to make sure that your unit selling proposition or unique selling points should be on that title characters that are being shown. Now, moving forward on that, now almost, uh, I think in one or two months uh, in Amazon.in also this feature will be released because in .com it is already there. Previously, what used to happen is if we have a 3.8 rating, it used to show four stars. If we have a 4.3, mm. it used to show five, 4.5 stars. If we have 4.7, it shows five stars. Now what is happening is in .com, if you are getting 3.8 rating, it will show 3.8 rating. Mm. It will not show four stars. So Amazon is clearly showing more importance towards the uh, quality that the seller is providing. That is one thing. Next, moving forward inside the listing, uh, I'll go towards the A plus content. In A plus content, you get option of choosing either the module which have, which allows you to put four tiles of images and three tiles of images. Mm. Now you will notice when you're using that four, four tiles of images, you get some white space on both of the sides of the screen. When you use the three uh, tiles images, you see it is covering the whole space of the screen because that is what you, you should use and also use as less text as you can put it mm -hmm. on the image as infographics and put more focus on the first four to five reviews that shows up in mobiles. That is going to be really important. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So since we discussed about this, so what is your take on mobile optimization versus desktop optimization? What tips you have for that? Yeah. So recently I posted one uh, post on my LinkedIn profile and that received really bad hate from people. In that, uh, in that post, I told that uh, if you are listening to agency owners and Amazon experts, don't listen to them if they're only saying to optimize based on mobile conversion. Now, I had valid points to back that up. I showed screenshots of two of my clients, one doing almost $3 million, another is doing $1 million a year. In that, the $3 million client, the page views, you know, in business report, we get all those details like mobile page views versus desktop page views, browser page views, and session percentage for mobiles and for desktop. In that, the one client that, that uh, did $3 million, they got almost 3,000 page views for one of their product. And that is for browser, that means desktop. And same page view that they have got in mobiles as well. And the conversion rate is almost same. So for that AA sign, for this AA sign, for this client, it is not that relevant to only optimize for mobile view. You have to also think of desktop. Mm. But on the other hand, there was another client who have received almost 1500 impressions or uh, page views, sorry, on mobiles, whereas they have received only 300 page views on desktop. Okay. But for this particular AA sign, for this client, it is quite doable. You go and optimize for mobile view. So what I meant to say is look at the data then start optimizing based on mobiles or desktop. Because if you are just uh, doing the optimization based on what you are listening to, then you are leaving out a lot in the table. A very, very valid point. So data speaks a lot. I could clearly understand that. And um, a personal question from my side. So should brands hire an agency or they should have an in-house team? So what's your take in this? Because I also run an agency. I want to yeah. hear from you about this. Yeah, so this is a really good question. I mean, uh, so it completely depends on what your budget is. So let's assume we go like you have a lot of team members, right? And you pay salaries to them and you know exactly how you're paying. When you go and hire a team, frankly speaking, all this PPC work, one person cannot manage. Right. You need to hire at least four to five people, one graphic designer, one PPC expert, one operations expert, and one lead account strategies or a brand manager. So all these things, when you go and hire, it is easily going to cost you 1.5 lakhs or 1 lakhs, right? Mm. Plus the time that you are going to spend on training them, because ultimately you have to train them. There is okay. no one that is going to train. So that cost, you have to count whether that cost is sufficient for you, or it is much more relevant to go and hire someone who already have a team, 
who already have a professional team that handles each and every aspects of that. That is one point that I want to share. Also, we recently launched one program called Train Your PPC Person, where we mainly targeting those brands which are backed up, which are funded, which wants their team to be trained. Because what mm -hmm. we have seen is they're not looking to hire an agency. They're not looking to share their data with anyone. They're mostly thinking of how we can train ourselves or our team. But when they go and train, they see that there are a lot of options that they don't know. There are a lot of strategies that they need to learn first, then implement. And I and you, we are all into this, right? We are learning constantly on only this aspect. So the knowledge we can gather, the connection that we can make, make is much more higher than if they start today. Because we have started almost five, seven years back. So that is the question, whether you want to invest that much amount on training, giving the time and training your team. Plus there is an option that they can fly away. So all those things comes in play and then you have to make the decision. Okay, one more question I have since uh, I'm also an agency owner. So how do you generally share reports to clients? If you could uh, share some tips on that, because this report is not just for clients. Even if I am a seller, there should be a proper dashboard where I'm able to maintain all the reports. So any external tool that you would suggest for a seller or for agency to maintain the data so that it's pictorial representation makes us to understand better. Any suggestion from you? No, so far we are using uh, Google Sheet to do that, but we are also looking at some softwares that we can use. Frankly speaking, there are a lot of PPC tools that helps in optimization. We are looking mm. into and uh, we are testing some demos like which we can use. And okay. uh, if I came across some good one, I'll definitely suggest you on that. But frankly speaking, mm. I am still blank on this part. Sure. We are also looking for some tools to optimize things and also on some tools to make sure that automatically data are pulled and shown on the client dashboard, like there's an Excel sheet where they can understand, okay, the overall sales from where it is coming, everything. I'm also trying to automate it. So just want to understand from you if you have got yeah. any solution. Right now, uh, right now, Google Sheets are behaving the same for us and clients understand really well when we show them the graphs, like how exactly. much we have improved per ASI level, which were not performing before and all. So, and also we share them weekly suggestions and optimizations that mm -hmm. they need to do in order to get more conversions. I think that is what we are doing, but a particular dashboard that will help us a lot. I'll definitely yeah. suggest you if I came across something like that. Sure, sure, sure. So this interview was completely knowledgeable interview to be very honest, Sami. So just people just share the overview information. Okay, go with the product title, go with these words that much. But you have shared a very in-depth data and I believe our audience will really love it. And I would highly recommend uh, you to follow Sami channel. So I'll put all the links of Sami, YouTube, Instagram, etc. So the data that you're giving, that's what I really love you in the YouTube channels because you're not just speaking at the top. You are just going deep driving into it. And why do we need to do that? Where to get the report? How data is really important because many people as you said, I'm just taking a point from you only. So they don't value the data. Instead, they listen, they generalize things. Okay, mobile only sales is happening. Let's work on mobile optimization. So instead of generalization, every brand is unique. Every brand is different. So you clearly explain that a very, very detailed interview. And I believe uh, this will be one of the best videos in my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate that. Okay. Thank you, everyone. So please make sure that you're following Sammy. All the links will be in the, attached in the description. Thank you. See you in another video.